Okay, thank you. Okay, hello everyone. Thanks for joining this session. Um, let me show the presentation here. Um, so yeah, we had a few technical problems here, but we could hopefully solve. And I will prepare a lot of hands-on kind of action here uh, in my terminal. So I was hoping we, I could do this right now because, I mean, but hopefully it's working. And um, I hope it, we enjoyed the session. Uh, so my name is Sergio. I'm from Brazil. Um, I have been doing a lot of embedded stuff for 25 plus years. I have a company, Embedded Labworks. Um, I do consulting training. Um, everything embedded Linux uh, related. And I am a um, kind of a part-time uh, contributor of a few open source projects, including BuildRoot, the Linux kernel, and Yocto. So our idea here is to talk about debugging. That's a topic that I found it fascinating because um, this is something that uh, it's a kind of a byproduct of the development, right? We usually don't learn about the buggy uh, in theory, only in practice, right? Uh, we, we, we learn about programming, developing software, but uh, when it comes to finding solve issues, like we have to learn that in practice. There are a few books out there, but uh, I always like um, feel that we should have more um, documentation and more resources about this. So that's why I'm doing a few of those uh, debugging talks out there. I have done one uh, three years ago in the uh, last Embellinus conference that I have uh, um, I participated. Uh, it was kind of um, focused on the kernel. So right now I'm doing another one, but more uh, broad, like I'm going to cover kernel and also user space debugging. Uh, I have here a board from Turadex. I'm running a really, really small um, system. I'm booting from the network. So when I boot the device, it will download the kernel, the device tree, and mount the root file system over the network using NFS. So it's a kind of a good uh, architecture to, to try stuff to debug. I mean, that's what we're going to try to do here. I want to start with a little bit of introduction. Let me manage my time here because I have a lot of stuff that I want to show. Um, so I'm going to be very fast in the introduction because I want to, to focus on the hands-on, on showing kind of real uh, cases uh, and let's use the tools, right? Like GDB, F-Trace, and several different tools here to find out bugs in an embedded Linux system. Um, one of the ideas here is to show that uh, there are a lot of tools, right? And you may have different kind of problems. And depending on the problem, there is one or a few of good tools to solve that kind of problem. Like, if you're having performance problems, you probably don't want to use GDB to debug performance problems, because GDB will impact the performance of the system. Um, so depending on the problem, you're going to have probably um, the right tool to solve that. So my idea here is to talk a little bit about the problems that you can have and the tools that you have to solve these kind of problems and show everything in press. It's kind of a joke that I like, right? For us developers that write software. Um, and when someone finds bugs in our software, right, we have this kind of uh, six stages from basically denying, right? I mean, I wrote the software, there is no bug there. Um, and then you go to like, okay, but in my machine, right? I, like, could be happening in your machine, but in my machine it works. Until we go to the question, right? How did that ever work? So that's usually true. Um, so, well, we know what the bugging is, right? So we decided to use that word bug to represent errors in software, and the bugging is removing bugs from software or errors from software. Um, 
if we think about where the process to, to debug any error or issue, uh, I think we can come up with this kind of five steps. Understanding the problem, that's very important because if you don't understand the problem, how can you solve it, right? Like if you, if you see a kernel ops, if you don't know what a kernel ops is, if you don't know how to interpret this uh, dump from the kernel, how can, we, can you solve this problem? So understanding the problem, understanding what is happening is very important. The second step would be reproduce the problem. That's also very important because if you don't know how to reproduce the problem, how can you confirm that you fix it in the end, right? So we have to, to know the complete steps to reproduce a problem. So later on, when you apply the fix, you will run these steps again to make sure that the problem is fixed. The next step, identifying the root cause. Usually that's what takes most of the time, right? Like you're having a crash in the kernel. So you have the kernel ops, the kernel panic, you can analyze the kernel, you have to understand that. Um, you have to be able to reproduce that, right? You have to know the steps to cause this crash. And then the next step is identify the root cause. What is causing the crash? That's usually take or can take a little bit of time. The, the first step is now that you find the root cause, you just have to change the code, rebuild it, deploy it, and test it. Usually that's kind of fast, right? You don't take much. Of course, it depends on the software, the, the size of the software, but uh, usually don't, don't take much of our time. And of course, if you fix it, just celebrate it, not go back to one of the earlier steps to see what is happening, what is going on. I, I can, uh, looking at different problems, I can like divide the problems in five categories. Maybe if you know other category, you can just let me know. But if when we have problems, like I can try to put those problems in five different categories. Crash is a kind of problem when the software like just interrupts abruptly. Um, Lookups, when the software just hangs doing something that we don't know. Um, logic or implementation problems, the, those are problems that like everything looks like it's working, but the output's not the desired. So it's a kind of implementation problem. Um, resource leakage, that's another kind of problem, right? Could be memory, could be, I don't know, file descriptors, anything that can be allocated by an application uh, could be leaked if the application doesn't deallocate in the end. And performance or lack of performance, right? That's another kind of issue. Everything works, but the performance is bad. Usually a performance issue, um, it's a kind of a usability issue, right? Like the system comes slow, it's easy to use, it's difficult to use because it is using a lot of CPU. Sometimes you can have consequences like uh, reboot, right? Like uh, your software starts using lots of memory and then the out of memory killer from the kernel just triggered and then reboot the system, things like this. But uh, the cause is a performance issue. Um, and there are tools and techniques to debug those kind of problems. And in the end, I could come up with five categories um, of tools and techniques. Our brain is one of them, right? That's possibly the main tool that we have, right? Um, the second category of tools and techniques, post-mortem analysis. It's a kind of a technique where you just collect information from the system to do analysis somewhere else, right, later. Um, so maybe you don't have direct access to the device to go there and do the, the analysis there. You just collect information and you go to your machine so you have more tools to do this analysis. Um, tracing and profiling, it's a kind of analysis that, uh, I mean, most of us do when you put prints in the code you are doing tracing, right? Tracing is a kind of technique where you instrument the code at runtime. Um, so you add instrumentation points in the code. Could be 
at build time or at run time, but at run time the code will be, will be instrumented with your instrumentation points. Uh, and you, when you add prints in the code, you are doing just that. But as we will see here, there are a lot of tools that could put the prints in the code for you, right? You don't have to open the search code to do that. Um, interactive debugging, that's another class of known tools for debugging, right? Like GDB, for example, it's the most known tool, tool in, in our space that makes it possible to interactively uh, debug the system, right? And run the code step by step, look at the memory, things like this. And uh, the last one that I'm calling uh, debugging frameworks, it's kind of tools that were built to debug specific kind of problems. For example, Valgrind, there is a very known tool for that. Valgrind is a kind of framework where you can build tools on top of it to debug memory problems or do profiling, things like this. Um, hopefully, if we have time, we're going to see some hands on, on all of those tools. So my idea here is to talk a little bit about each one of those categories and show in practice how that works, starting with uh, post-mortem analysis. It's kind of very common, right, to have crashes, could be in kind of space, in user space, um, and we have tools to analyze this kind of issue. A crash could happen because uh, the software is misbehaving, like it's trying to access uh, uh, an invalid memory address or is trying to, I don't know, execute an uh, invalid instruction, right? and the software will just crash. It's a user space code. Uh, the kernel will send a signal to the process. For example, if a process tries to access an invalid hash of memory, the kernel via the MMU will identify that and send a signal to the process, SIGSAGV, and that process will be um, ended, right? Will be aborted. Um, how can we debug problems like that? So I wanna I have everything here in the slides, right, in case like I cannot do the hands-on, but everything that we have here in the slides I'm gonna do in the terminal and show you guys how that work. So uh, as I mentioned, I have here a small embedded Linux system. Um, I added a few bugs in the system, so we can do this hands-on here. The first one is when I injected a pen drive, I have uh, kernel ops message, crash in the kernel. So this is a kernel ops message. Um, should we ignore this? Of course not. Um, should we be afraid of this? Of course not. Uh, there are a lot of numbers here, that's true, but there are a lot of useful information here, right? So if you go from the beginning of the kernel ops message, we can see the reason, unable to handle kernel pointer, the reference. Um, we can see where uh, we had a problem. So we can even see the function because there is a config option the kernel enabled called call it config cut all sims. Um, that's usually by default enabled in the kernel. Uh, and it is able to solve some symbols like the name of the functions. So we have there the storage probe, that's the function that crashed. Sorry, sorry. And the other question. So, so what is the config option? What is what, sorry? The config k all sims. Yeah. Um, proc config config k all this one. Um, usually it's enabled. So we usually have those kind of uh, symbols in the kernel. That's why we can see, for example, in the end we have the backtrace, right, with all of the, the, the functions that were called. Um, so we have, like, in the, the end we have kthread. That's because the enumeration of the OSB happens inside that thread in the kernel. Um, via coworker, so k thread, coworker thread, and you can go up until the function that caused the crash in the kernel, storage probe. How can we analyze this? 
um, we have the address, so we can just convert the address to the line of code. Um, that can be done. You just need the source code of the kernel. You, you need basically two things. Um, you need the source code of the kernel. So I have here the source code of the kernel that I'm running there. And you need the L file of the kernel with the bugging symbols. That's the file called VM Linux in the in the source um, in the source code of the kernel. When you build a kernel, this file is generated. Um, this file is used to create the kernel image in the end, but um, um, in the end it is not used to boot the kernel, this file here. But ca you can use it to debug the kernel because you have there all the symbol tables of the kernel. You can solve symbols with this file. Um, so we can use two tools for that. Um, one of them is ADDR2 line. Um, this tool you can just give let me to ADDR to line. Um, you can just give the L file. I'm going to ask you to print here the function. I think it's that way. The L file and the address. So, what is the address? You can take from the backtrace or from this PC program counter, and then you just give to the two. And then you have there the source code and the line of code that causes the crash. So I can just open there and see this, this line of code here. Um, I can do the same thing with GDB, so I can just open the GDB for my tool chain. I can open the VM Linux file with, with GDB. Um, and then in GDB, there are a few um, commands that I can use to solve symbols. One of them is list. I can give list um, an address, or I can give the, the memory plus the index. So I'm going to do different here. I'm going to give this, um, that's the base, the same thing as the address, right? The name of the function plus the index inside the function that causes the crash. So I can give this to the list command of GDB and it will show me the same thing, like it was that address, that line in that file that causes this crash. It's important to note that if you compile the kernel with a few security options, like if you enable uh, the randomization of addresses, then you will not get this, right? Because the address will be randomized. Then um, security use usually goes against the bugability, right? And more secure, uh, and more difficult to debug the system. But that's just how it is. What about a user space application? Um, how can you debug a user space application? So that's kind of uh, the same thing in terms of how you do it, but with the user space applications, you don't have a kernel. Oops. But you can ask the kernel to generate you a core dump. A core dump is a kind of um, snapshot of the memory when the kernel crashed. That is a common in Linux, usually by default, uh, the power when a process crashes, the core dump is not generated. Let me show you. I have a command here. I think it's f pink. Yeah. So I added a bug in this command, and it's crashing, segmentation full. And um, there is a command in Linux. Call it uh, ulimit. It's a built-in command from Bash that is able to Let me run again here. That is able to enable the generation of core dump. So that's a parameter. What is O limit? O limit here. So there is a parameter, the maximum size of core files created. So um, by default is zero, so 
no core dump is generated, and then you can just change this if your distribution has disenabled, right? So here I can just run a limit dash c unlimited. Then I just enable the generation of core dump. Now if I run the command again, I'm going to have a core file that I can debug uh, with GDB. So what I can do is, here we have this core file. This is kind of a snapshot of the memory. So I can take it to my machine, this file. And what do I need to debug this? I need the core dump file, I need the source code of the application, and the binary with debugging symbols. I'm using here build root to build the system. Um, so let me go to the build root directory. Um, build root, uh, output, build, f pink. So I have here the file with the bugging symbols. This is the binary with the bugging symbols. I have the source code, so I can just debug this uh, core dump. How to do it? First, I need a core dump, so I'm going to copy from the root file system. That is in my machine because I'm using NFS, so I'm going to take the rootfs um, root core. So I'm moving to my machine, the core dump file, adding permissions to my user, and I'm going to open it with GDB. GDB, um, the binary with the bugging symbols, and the core dump. So GDB, the binary with the bugging symbols, and dash C core, that's my core dump. As we can see, GDB already opens the, the, the binary debugging symbols. It analyzes the core dump and shows me the line of code that crashed automatically. So I, cannot, I, don't do, I don't need to do anything else. There is a nice feature, feature from GDB that's called TUI. I like it because it's a kind of a graphical view of the source code. So dash TUI, you can enable this and then uh, you can, we have the command line below and the source code above. Um, then you can interact more with the source code, right, and, and see the lines. And what is nice about the core dump um, is that we can, since we have the snapshot of the memory, we can just um, investigate the memory. So I can, for example, print, right, print variables, print option. Then I can see the value. Um, Option. Option is a pointer. No. What I am. Options. Thank you. Options. Yeah, yeah. Options is, is a pointer. We can see that options is not no, so probably not the issue. Probably argv is the issue here, right? If we print options argv, yes, argv is no, that's why it's crashed. So my point here is that with just a few comments using some tools uh, with the right infrastructure, right, we can easily find uh, the offending code that's causing some problem. All of these comments are here. So you can check it out later. Um, tracing. Tracing is another technique for debugging. The idea of tracing is instrumenting the code. There are several different ways to do tracing. You can trace um, at uh, build time, right? You can add tracing points at build time in the code. You can trace at runtime, and the kernel provides a, a complete infrastructure for that. So you can trace kernel code and user space code. Um, I want to show you guys, uh, let's see this one. For example, I have here a comment that's taking 
and let me see if I have here in the So I have here a comment that's taking a lot of time, like it's just trying to uh, turn on a LED, but it's taking four seconds. So how can we debug that? Of course, um, we could uh, start printing, uh, adding prints in the code of the kernel to see where it's taking that much time. But the kernel provides a complete infrastructure to debug this kind of problem and, and here we're going to use ftrace for that so uh, ftrace uh, is part of the kernel tracing subsystem um, if you enable it so you can go to the kernel configuration in kernel hacking the menu kernel hacking there is a sub, sub menu there called tracing and if you enable tracing there are several op options there that you can enable to trace like kernel function calls, you can trace uh, latency, things like that. So we're going to use here ftrace to debug this issue. Um, for those who don't know ftrace, sys, ftrace is, provides an interface via file, so that's very nice because you can interact with ftrace in the command line. You just have to mount the tracefs file system that I guess I don't know if I already mounted or not. Maybe not. I'm going to mount it again. Device service service busy. Okay. So I just mounted trace FS and I have it here. It's a file-based interface. You can interact with the kernel. So um, let's say I want to uh, trace all kernel functions. We have here the available tracers with all of the tracers that, that I can enable. Um, let's say I want to enable the function graph tracer. Just see how it works. I have to echo this tracer to the uh, current tracer file. So I just write the name of the tracer in the current trace file. And that should be, I forgot, forgot one thing since my kernel has crashed before I have to reboot it. So system will be unstable. Every time the kernel crashes, we have an oops, this kernel is unstable. Uh, I discovered during my test that ftrace is not working after I crashed my kernel with the USB stick. So I just rebooted, but should be very fast. Okay, so I'm gonna enable it again. Function graph. Now I have a file, for example, um, trace pipe that I can follow all of the kernel functions that is being called. So I can trace everything that is happening inside the kernel in terms of function calls. There is a tool. What is the output? Um, I'm just... Uh, printing the output of the trace pipe file. So this file, it's a kind of the buffer of the tracing, the, the tracing subsystem. So, and it's a pipe, so it never stops. It keeps showing the buffer. There is a tool that is built on top of this tracefs file system that is called um, tracemd. And I'm going to use it here to record the execution of that program. So it's trace CMD. It's basically, it's going to basically write those files. So it's kind of just a, a tool to help um, interact with the tracing system. Um, record, function graph, and this is the command. So it, it will run this command. It will only trace this command and the functions calls inside the kernel called by this command and it will add, add, put this in a file for me. So it should take a few seconds and then after that it starts generating the file. Oh yeah, I am in a directory that I don't have write access so that, let me do again. 
Very good. Agora, agora, now I have a trace dot that file that I can analyze. There is a very nice graphical tool called kernel shark that we can use to analyze this, this trace, but I'm going to just use here trace CMD um, report. And I'm sending this report to a trace text file because I want to open it with VI. Um, This is the result of the tracing. And here we can see all of the functions that were called uh, for this specific program. Now we have to use a little bit of creativity, right, to try to find out what is happening. If we search for LED, that's because I'm trying to turn on LED, I can get to LED functions here. And we can see that here in the middle of an LED function calls, we have an MSLIP. And this function call took a few seconds, right? Um, I don't know if VI is going to the right place, but yeah. So, so if we open this GPIO LED uh, set function in the kernel, we can find out that that is a and sleep inside the kernel that is causing this delay. Of course, I added this uh, so for this demonstration. Um, so I would say it's much faster than if you start adding prints in the code of the kernel to try to find out what's happening. Another approach would be to run a debugger, right, to see what's going on. That could be another approach. I guess I have 10 minutes, so let's see what we can do now. Um, user space tracing, there are several tools that we, you can use to do user space tracing. Um, one tool that I really like is S-Trace, very simple, very efficient, right? It's easy to install, it's just a small tool that is able to trace system calls. And tracing system calls can help a lot in defining problems. So here in this example, I ran netcat and it's returning an error. Couldn't set up listening socket. Um, we could like use GDB or any other tool to debug this issue, or maybe just S trace. So you can just run S trace if you have it in your system. You just run S trace with this tool, and you can get all of the system calls. And then in the end, you can see what is happening, right? Like when it's calling the bind system call. It's giving a new parameter in the second parameter, and if you go to the bind interface, you're going to see that you have to pass a SOC address there, not new, so that's the problem. So you can spot this kind of problems, like when you run a tool, it doesn't return anything, or it's come some kind of mysterious error, right? And don't know what's going on. Just run as trace. You can, like, identify, for example, that the program is trying to open a file, it's not finding the file, and it's returning a, an error, but it's not saying to you that a file is missing, for example. So it's a very nice, simple, and useful tool. The kernel has an infrastructure for user space debugging, probing user space applications at runtime. It is called uh, uProbe, user space probe. So you can really probe user space applications at runtime. Um, when you enable uProbe in the kernel, you are able to add at runtime trace points at function calls of your application. Because this S trace tool, and that is also the other L trace tool that is able to, to help you to trace like system calls, library calls, but not the calls from your application. If you want to debug to trace the calls from your application, then you're going to problem have to use some kind of user space tool. Um, and for example, Perf is able to do that. Don't have time to do the demonstration now, but everything is, uh, is in the slides. You can check it out later. Um, so the perf tool does a lot of stuff, right, in terms of tracing and profiling. One of the things that is able to use the uprobe kind of subsystem to um, take the symbols from applications, identify the, the, the addresses, and uh, add tracing points to those addresses so you can instrument the application at runtime. So here in this example, 
Uh, this is a small kind of script to um, put trace points in all of the functions of an application. That's ETH2. Um, and then you can just run and record what is going on. It will generate a file with the, the functions that were called, called perf.data. And then with this file, you can see all of the functions that were called from your application. And you can try to figure out what's happening. In this specific case, it's an application that is freezing, hanging. So you can identify these kind of issues. Um, there are two more kind of uh, class of tools that is very useful. Um, I have just a few minutes. Uh, interactive debugging, that's very common and useful, right? Uh, GDB is our main tool for interactive debugging. And f for the most of cases, it helps a lot. Um, in the embedded Linux space, there is just one small problem because you have all of the tools in your machine, but you have the code running on your another machine. So you have, you need a kind of uh, client server um, architecture. So you run uh, GDB server on one side and GDB client on the other side. And you can do, do just this with user space code and with kernel code, right? The kernel has a, a um, GDB server inside of it. So you can use it, you can run the kernel step by step, or you can, you can also do it with user space code. I was also planning a demonstration on this, but we don't have time. Um, this is kernel being debugged. And um, user space is more simple, right? To debug a user space application is much, much more simple. I can do it here in one minute. Um, let's, let's, see we want, let's say we want to debug this application here. Um, this application here is freezing, right? So we want to debug this application. What we need to do is start GDB server on the device. GDB server. We're going to use an internet connection here to communicate with the client. So GDB now, GDB server. Now it's waiting for a connection. Then we go to the host machine. We have to go to the source code of the application, that is tree. Where is tree? Tree is here. Then here I start the GDB client, passing my uh, application with debugging symbols. And I'm also going to start the tree mode. Now I just have to connect. The command is target remote. And the IP number and the port number connected. I can put a breakpoint to the main function, for example, for example, breakman. Continue the execution. Now I can control the execution of that program. Um, and uh, yeah, let's just run. It's freezing. Then we can just cancel and see why it is freezing, right? Very easy to spot this kind of issue. Okay, I'm out of time here. Um, just to conclude here the presentation, um, my point here in the end, right, so I try to show several different, different uh, tools and, and techniques like tracing, uh, interactive debugging, uh, crash uh, analysis and things like this. Um, when we start our career, the only thing that we do to debug is adding prints in the code and, and that's sometimes or most, most of the times not the right way to do it. So over time you learn different tools and, and techniques. So prints in the code is not the right solution for the most situations. So there are different situations, different kind of problems and different tools. And we need to understand and it's important to know and understand all of those, tool, those tools and, and know how and when to use any of those um, when we need to solve bugs in a Linux system. So yeah, I guess that's it, guys. Thanks a lot for your time. I hope you enjoyed. Yeah.
and now you get it.